Hey there, my name is Carter. Welcome to Okim Bytes. My goal with this set of lectures is to teach you organic chemistry in small bite-sized chunks. Today, let's talk about orbitals. Here's part one, part two will be coming soon. All right, so the key is that electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as possible. So they tend to fill up slots that are as close to the nucleus first, and slowly they'll go further and further away as you add more and more electrons. So remember, closer to the nucleus is better. But how do you really know where the electrons are going to be if they just want to be as close to the nucleus as possible. This is defined by Schrodinger's wave equation. We can treat electrons as either particles or as waves and using Schrodinger's wave equation we can figure out the probability of where the electrons will be by using orbitals. So orbitals tell you 95% of the time where the electron is going to be. The trick is that every electron has a quantum number and this quantum number tells you where it's going to be with that 95% probability. So let's go through the quantum numbers. Just remember, every electron can be defined by a set of quantum numbers, and one of the first parts of it is called n. So this is the principal quantum number. This tells you the energy level, essentially how close is it to the nucleus. n can be 1, 2, 3, etc. It can change based on how big the atom is. Another quantum number is l. This tells you the orbital shape. Remember, orbitals tell you with 95% probability where is the electron going to be at any given time. And so the shape is very important. It tells you around the nucleus in what shape is this probability distribution. L is also called the azimuthal number. And L can go from 0 to n minus 1. Remember, n is the principal number. n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, and l can go from 0 to essentially 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that it will be always n minus 1. And here's an example. If n is 2, then l can be 0, or it can be n minus 1, which is 1. Hopefully, that's simple enough. Another quantum number is m. m tells you the orbital orientation. I'll show you later that while L tells you what the orbital shape looks like, now that shape can actually move around in 3D space. And that is defined by M. M can be negative L, zero, or L, as shown here, and it's called the magnetic quantum number. So as an example, if L equals one, M can equal negative L, which is negative one, it can equal zero, or it can equal L, which is one. And the final quantum number is S, that's the spin, it can either be negative one half or positive one half, which is used to define in which direction the electron is spinning. This is also called the spin quantum number. All right, so now we go into the key part of this lecture, which is the orbital shape. Remember that n tells you how close the electron is to the nucleus, and l, which is equal to all the way from zero to n minus one, will tell you the orbital shape. So if l equals zero, we actually give that a special name, that's called the s orbital and it looks like this. What this means is, imagine you put the protons and the neutrons in the middle between the x, y, and z axis. Then the s orbital is this sphere which tells you that this electron can be anywhere within that sphere with 95% probability. L can also be one. Remember, then L goes from zero to n minus one. And if n equals two, then it's possible for L to equal one. We give L equals one a special name, which is the p orbital. And the p orbital looks kind of like a teardrop. Here what you see are three orientations of the p orbital. There's piece of x, there's piece of y, and there's piece of z. Why do these exist? Remember that there's another quantum number called m, which tells you the orientation of the orbital. So with the s orbital, which was the same as l equals zero, m was limited to zero. With l equals one, now m can be negative one, zero, or positive one. And that's what these orientations relate to. However, you might be wondering, well, is piece of x the same thing as m equals negative one, zero, or positive one? What does it actually mean? That's a little bit more complicated to answer, and it's not part of this lecture, but you should look it up. It's an interesting thing to think about. You usually don't get tested on this with an organic chemistry, so it doesn't really matter, but if you're curious, 
look it up. For piece of x and for piece of y, m is 50% negative 1 and 50% positive 1. But that's for you to look up and for you to discover. That's it for this lecture. Remember that orbitals tell you 95% of the time where is this electron going to be. And the quantum numbers are used to define the shape of that probability distribution, where those electrons are going to be around the nucleus. It's as simple as that. In our next part of the same orbital series, we're going to talk a little bit more detail about the orbitals. Hope to see you there. Talk to you later.